Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Marvel United, and this is published by Simon Games, designed by Eric Lane and Andrea Cervisio. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can hear all the mispronounced names of designers that we talk about here on Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. I'm sorry, guys. We try hard. We try. There's some hard names out there. Yeah, I'm also just bad at saying names in general. That's true. Yeah, it's Sometimes she calls me Brian instead of Ryan. I've never done that. That's true. All right, <laughs> <laughs> Marvel United. This is a cooperative game. You have the forces of the Marvel heroes against the Marvel villains. It's, you can mix it, up, mix it up and match it up however you want. Let me show you how to play. All right, the first thing we want to do is we want to choose our villain. You got three to choose from. Pick whichever one you want. I would say that Red Skull is probably the easiest and Taskmaster is probably the hardest. All right, so next, you're gonna choose your heroes. Every player gets one and there are seven to choose from. All right, so then you have locations that you're gonna put out there. Once you've chosen that location, you also want to add various things to it like thugs, you're gonna add civilians, and you're gonna add threat cards uh, that are specific to whatever villain you chose. All right, next, you've got a ton of tokens in this game. All right, so there's tokens that let you move across you know, adjacent. You have six locations in the board. Uh, this is going to let you move to the ones to your left or right one spot. You have uh, tokens that are heroic tokens. Those allow you to uh, both save civilians as well as complete some of those other uh, threat cards that are out there that are specific to the villains again. And then we have attack cards. Those are going to be how you're going to defeat thugs as well as defeat some of those threats or the big, big bad themselves. They have some health that you can take down with those wilds or with those attack cards. Then you have wild tokens. Those wild tokens can be any one of those three things I just mentioned either heroic actions, attack actions, or moving. So some of the tokens are specific to certain characters or certain villains, certain scenarios, so you're not gonna use them all every game, but there's just a ton of tokens in this game. All right, so each villain has their own win condition. So if we look at somebody like Red Skull, there says if they ever have that little, the Tesseract give it to the end of that fear track, they are going to win the game. We also lose the game if any of our decks run out, either uh, the villain needs to play a card, they have no cards left, or if we as the players run out of cards from our deck, we can lose the game that way as well. As heroes, we have some objectives we need to complete, these missions, and that might be uh, getting rid of four of the threats on the various locations around the board, or it might be getting rid of nine thugs or more, or it might be rescuing nine civilians or more. All right, so if you're able to do two out of the three of those things, then what's gonna happen is then you can start doing damage to the big bad villain themselves. If you're able to uh, complete those two missions objectives and take down all the health of the villain, you are going to be declared winners. All right, so how does the game actually work? All right, so on your turn, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a three card hand. You're going to draw a card, and then you're gonna play a card. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to get those actions that are on that card. There's, token, you know, there's symbols across the bottom of that, that you're going to be able to use, as well as, more importantly, you get to use the symbols of the cards that happened before you. All right, and then you're going to resolve where those are. You're going to, you can do them in any order. Even if they're the cards before you and the cards that you played are in an order that doesn't necessarily make sense, you can rearrange them. You take the tokens based off of whatever you used, and then you can play them. All right, so after you resolve them, if you end in a location that has uh, the threat card removed, there's going to be an end of turn bonus on that location that might help you move around the board more, maybe rescue some civilians, all different actions that might happen. So what's going to happen is the villain is going to start the game off by playing one of their cards. Then whoever's the first player is going to play their card. Then from there on out, this next player gets their action as well as the previous person's actions. All right, so you're going to play three hero cards in player order, whether it looks like, you know, every other or one, two, three, or whatever the case is. And then the villain's going to play their card, every third card. All right, so the way this is going to work is the game is going to start off with the villain playing one card. And then whoever the first player is, they're going to play their card. Uh, and then the second player, they're going to play their card and then also get some benefits of the previous person's card. All right, so after three heroes have played their cards, then it's back to the villain. They're gonna play one of their cards, then the heroes take three more cards, then the villain goes again. But after you've completed just one of those tasks, like I mentioned, either getting rid of four of the threats, nine of the thugs, or nine of the civilians, then he kind of ramps up. Then the villain's going to have their actions every two cards instead of every three. So you're gonna see more of the bad stuff from them. 
You can also get damaged by the various things. Whenever you get damaged, you actually lose cards from your hand. If you ever run out of cards in your hand, you are knocked out. You basically have to wait a turn. Uh, some bad stuff's gonna happen. <laughs> you, you, you wanna avoid that if you can. And then after a round, then you get to come back in and play some more. All right, so after all that, if you were able to, like I said, complete those two missions, defeat all the health off of the bad guy, you're gonna be declared the winner. If that is too easy for you, there is some challenge modes as well. You can remove cards from your deck in order to make it harder on yourself. And also there's some solo modes as well. All right, so be sure to check all that out. All right, back to Ryan and Bethany. I really liked how there was those follow actions, right? So one person would play their card, the next person would be able to activate their card, plus the card before them, at least in terms of the symbols, not necessarily all the special abilities. Like the Hulk can't, you know, do like an interrogation like the Black Widow can. And just I like that. Try. And, you know, Iron Man can't Hulk smash. But the point is, you still get all those symbols, which is I really, really enjoy. It makes for a really fun planning around the table as you're kind of talking things out. Like, okay, if you play that, I'll be able to do this, and then I'll be able to do this, whatever. And then the person after me will be able to do something else crazy as well. So I enjoyed that. All I can think of now is Iron Man Hulk smashing. Which actually has that Hulk smashing, that, what is it called, the Hulk Buster? Yeah, he has so, like a thing. What is it called? Did they have a name, Veronica? Something, something like. yeah, to like in the MCU to yeah. like con contain him. I remember that. Um, so I thought it was neat that the villains are actually pretty different in this. Their win condition is different for who you're playing and how they kind of fill up the board or what they do with the board. Those felt very different from each other, and I liked that they were different from each other and trying to do different things. As the game went on, as you completed more of these objectives, you know, whether it was clearing out a whole bunch of the thugs or rescuing civilians or completing, you know, the threats around the board, uh, you know, things got harder and harder because you, you were ticking off the villain, right? You are getting to the point where you were, like, you know, uh, completing some objectives they didn't want you to complete. So now, instead of playing every three cards, they're playing every two cards, which means they're basically 33% more active in the in the lineup, which which I thought was a nice pace. And really kind of as you were ramping up, they were ramping up also. I really thought that the minis were super cute, like really cutesy, that little um the the chibi minis. It was just adorable and it was nice because I thought that it made it kind of accessible for us to play with our family to have these cute little minis. Um the cardboard, however, was like super thin. Was it even cardboard? Or was it just like Slightly thicker paper. It was definitely slightly thicker paper, 100%. <laughs> but I don't know if the reason why that is is very intentional to kind of make this, um, because it was a mass market game, so it, it was more accessible, so you could put it in more places, like in you know, the stores like Walmart or Target, and that it was yeah. there. The average consumer is not going to pay $60. Exactly. But so, they might pay 30 or whatever. Exactly. So I think that if that was an intentional decision in order to get it there, I fully support that. All right, you guys, there's a lot of different levels of difficulty in this game. First of all, the villains themselves, at least ones in the box, kind of had like a, a easy, medium, hard. Each one kind of had its own difficulty level. Plus, depending on what the characters you played with, if you were randomized, like we did usually, um, some of them synced up better than, you know, some matchups were easier and harder than others. And plus, there was these challenge cards that you could add in, which basically made it so that characters had less of those wild cards. Those wild cards are really powerful, right? You take those out. Uh, first of all, your deck's thinner, and you're going to be chances to you know, lose lose sooner, but also uh, you're missing some really great cards from the deck. So I like having all those different challenges. I will say though, though, there's only seven characters in our particular edition of this game and only three villains. Um, there comes a certain point where you've kind of played them all, you've seen them all, you, you know, and you've maybe even beat them all. And it's like, ah, okay, um, it gets a little samey after that. You know, we, or you really want to go back and beat Ultron over and over again? And it's like, ah, no, probably not. Um, but the good news is, if you really enjoyed the base game, you've been having fun with it, there's a ton of expansions too, and there's even more uh, X-Men stuff planned for 2022 release. So there's um, no shortage of Marvel United content coming out. Okay, um, like, okay, so I'm going to say something like not nice, and I always feel bad about that, but I will Don't, we're viewers! <laughs> I want to be honest. So this game was fun, and I liked it. I was just bored. I was like bored when I was playing the game. After the first two games, I like Ryan, like Ryan was kind of hinting at, I felt like I had seen the game and I just wanted a little bit more. If, if I were to play a cooperative game like this where there's different locations and the bad guy is at different locations, I would personally prefer to play Death Eaters Rising. 
And it's not even a theme, a thematic thing necessarily, because I know, though I've read none of the comic books, I have seen all that's in the MCU. We have seen it all twice. So it's not that I don't enjoy this IP. It's just, I just enjoyed that game more. Like if I was going to choose one, because they feel really similar, I would definitely choose that. And there's also Thanos Rising, which... It's like I, the exact yeah, copy of... Well, I haven't played, but yeah, what what I've heard is that it's literally copy-paste the exact same game. Um, so does that mean that this game isn't good? Absolutely not. It's totally good. It's just I would prefer to play a different cooperative game. Whew, there, I said it. I was not bored by Marvel United. I quite enjoyed it, actually. Uh, specifically with my eight-year-old daughter. She really caught on to it really quick, which I thought was great. You know, typically in, in cooperative games, as you know, her, she started her gaming career, right, I did a little bit of that, that quarterbacking. You know, I kind of had, hey, what if we went over here? Yeah. You, we might be able to get some resources. Or, hey, what if we went over here? We'd be able to do this. Uh, and this one, I didn't have to tell her anything. She just got it. She understood it clearly. Hey, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to put some heroic actions on top of that thing. I'm going to go over there I'm gonna, and I'm going to rescue some civilians. Hey, uh, how about, how, you're actually giving me advice. If you played that card, then I would be able to go over there and yeah. I'd be able to use your, your move action or whatever. So I really enjoy being able to play it with her. This is a fantastic family game. If you are a fan of Marvel, if you are a fan of you know, cooperative games, if you like being able to play with your family, I think that you'd really enjoy Marvel United. Um, if you are into like a really you know strategy heavy game, or are, you know a deeper cooperative with a big challenge and lots of replayability, this isn't necessarily it. But I do think that you know that replayability will ramp up with more expansions as they come out. Yeah. Um, and also, um, yeah, just the Marvel world was, was was a lot of fun. It was a great playground for this this style yeah. of game. Um, really good for families. I don't see this like me busting this out with like the the, the squad, right? You know, the to a game night necessarily and playing it a whole lot. Maybe with me, you know, my brother in law or something like that. But for families, this is was a hit for for me at least. Yeah. Not for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine. It was, it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> but everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see your videos as they come out. And until then, you can find us on Facebook, we're Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. On Twitter, we're Ryan and Bethany One. And on Instagram, we are Ryan and Bethany. You guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.